Well, Colorado, it's all caught up to them. They've lost four of their last five. And and I critiqued Coach Prime. You were out in left field and they were yelling at me, and I, I heard you in left field about the use of the transfer portal and running so many players off. They had the great start. Deion Sanders' arrival has been good for college football. He's he's developed and given a lot of young kids a chance to play, but it's kind of caught up to them. Now people have figured them out. My issue is their offensive line is abysmal. My issue is he's got a really good assistant coaching staff. A, a couple of guys came from the NFL. Those kids are prepared to play, and the systems are running are really, really cool, state-of-the-art. But they got a terrible offensive line. He's going to have to go back into the transfer portal, and he's probably going to move some players out. But they are just so bullheaded, obstinate. You're getting the quarterback killed, and you haven't changed your offense one iota since the first week of the season. You know, you can say, I don't have enough left tackles or left guards to protect this guy. Well, then you move tight ends over there. You load the offense to that side to help that guy. Shadur Sanders was in the hospital Saturday night. He's on painkillers, injections, because he's had so many hits and so many injuries. He's been sacked 42 times. Oh, my God. 42. People don't get sacked 42 times in their career. He's had it in seven games. And what I don't understand with Coach Prime, yeah, I understand tough guy aura, take these hits, it's part of the game. That's your quarterback. That's your son. And you are exposing him to a fierce beating every Saturday. And your assistant coaches, who are pretty smart dudes, won't adjust and change the system to help protect that quarterback. I just don't understand that. And you got this mess in Michigan. NCAA showed up on that campus on Friday, and they were there Saturday. They're interviewing the football coaches in the program. This spying thing has kind of exploded. Now we find out that a staffer who has since been fired scouted 35 different Big Ten games, bought tickets in the stands, videoed. Videoed the game, videoed the coaching staffs for the signs they're given. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sleazy. And Harbaugh didn't know anything about this. Huh. Assistant coaches didn't know anything about this. And you got this sign-stealing scandal right on the heels of the probe that's still going on about illegal recruiting during the COVID blackout period. Is this Jim, the hamburger thing again? Jim Harbaugh's got a real <laughs> problem on his hands here. Yeah. And in fact, today, the story out of Ann Arbor is that Michigan has tabled a contract upgrade that Harbaugh was supposed to get beginning next year that would have taken him to $11 million a year. They've tabled it. You know, Harbaugh can say, I had no knowledge. Well, somebody within had knowledge because they allowed this to happen. I got to believe that there's going to be something really bad happen at the end of the season. Now, NCAA's got a problem here. Michigan, elite. Might be the best team in the country. Might even be better than Georgia. You're not going to fire Harbaugh now, are you? Or are you going to stretch this thing out till the playoffs are over? But I think Harbaugh's in big trouble because he's the CEO. You should know what's going on in your offices with your assistant coaches and that staffer. And I have a hard time understanding how he could not have any knowledge of sign stealing and not have any knowledge about violations during the COVID blackout period in 2020 when everybody else in the world shut down. They were not allowed to interact for, I think it was for 43 days with any potential recruits. And yet Michigan was doing that. So I know Harbaugh's got some problems. Okay. You're out in left field. Your thoughts on the Michigan man, your thoughts on coach prime. Well, it's, it reminds me of your former colleague, Jim Rome. He used to say, if you aren't cheating, you ain't trying. Right. <laughs> so it makes me wonder that, but I've seen all these rumors about Harbaugh going to the chargers. I mean, is that real? No, I don't think so. But Harbaugh's name has been floated out there and he has talked to NFL teams within the last two off seasons. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt that he's a hot commodity again, just like he was at Stanford, just like he was when he came out of USD. But 
we're we're dealing not with his potential future employer. We're dealing with his operation of the U of M football program and what he knows, what he should know, what he didn't know, what's going on there. Because that to me is really serious stuff. Yeah, it is. But but I think that that hamburger thing during the the COVID blackout. Remember he like bought a kid a lunch, and that was a recruiting violation. I mean that was pretty ticky tack. But you know with this. With all the NIL stuff going on, I mean, there's going to be a lot more aggressive recruiting, mm -hmm. you know? So again, I think, you know, you've talked about how they need a set of rules around the NIL and that the recruiting probably needs to be opened up a little bit, right? Because they're pretty hardcore on when you can talk and when you can't talk to these players. But as witnessed, Michigan's men were talking to recruits during that 43-day blackout period. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in the country was doing it. So that's a big issue. Your thoughts on Coach Prime, the quarterback, and his son? Yeah, that's something. Um, well, first of all, I remember Prime saying to a lot of these other teams and fan bases, say, saying, "Hey, you might be able to beat us this year, but we're just getting started," you know. And that, and I think he's right. I think year two and three, they're going to have way better recruits, and if they can keep that coaching staff together, terrific. But it is amazing that they're just letting Shador sort of, you know run for his life back there. You think that they would make the adjustment if these were like really top tier NFL type coaches. Maybe it just goes back to the point. They just, they don't have the roster. So any But movement, you change your system if you don't have a roster to help that quarterback by right. putting a tight end over there or put, maybe you'd have to give up one of your school players, but you put an extra lineman there. Mm -hmm. But they're not doing that. And then a kid is taking such wicked shots. He's still a Heisman candidate? Probably not anymore. No, yeah. no. He's lucky he's not in the hospital full time. So yeah. I, I just don't understand it. And it's his kid. It, you know, it's his quarterback, but it's his son that's just getting battered. Mm. And just wicked, wicked stuff.